Welcome to the unit on NumPy. In this unit, we're going to be talking about this really powerful Python package called NumPy, which is really popular with the data science community. The power of NumPy is because it allows vectorized data representation. It allows you to represent data in form of vectors and matrices and perform operations in terms of vectors and matrices. It allows you to represent data in form of vectors and matrices and allows you to perform operations on these vectors and matrices. This is a really intuitive way of representing data and a really popular way. So that is why NumPy is really powerful. For the purpose of this unit, we would be using NumPy, which is shipped with the uh, Canopy IDE or the Canopy Express IDE. Interacting with it through the IPython console uh, but if you wish to download NumPy for yourself and you're not going to be using the Canopy ID, you can do that from this page. From The link to this page would be uh, provided in the resources file which is provided. So you can get NumPy for your version of Python and your operating system and uh, work with it. But as I said, for the purpose of this course, we're going to be using NumPy with Canopy or interacting with it through IPython. So let's get started with NumPy. In order to use anything from NumPy, you would have to import the NumPy package. Okay, now importing the NumPy package as NP is a standard convention followed in the data science community. So this is how we're going to be doing it now. And this is how we're going to be doing it for the remainder of the course. So as the import is successful, it indicates that NumPy is pro properly installed. Uh, so we can start playing with NumPy. Uh, an ND array or an n-dimensional array is the basic data structure in NumPy, which allows all the vectorized representation and all the cool stuff. So let's get started by uh, creating an ND array. So the array method is used to create an ND array. To this method, you would pass a list of elements. Now this would create, okay, so this would create an ND array with four elements. If you want to create a more complex array, like a two dimensional array, you can use the same array method and pass to it a list of rows where each row would be uh, the elements. So basically it is a list of list of elements. So in this outer list, you would have the, each element would be a row and in the inner list, each element would be the individual element. So let's say, So this would create a three by three uh, matrix. Let's look at some of the attributes of this matrix. So if you want to find the dimensionality of the ND array, you can use the end dim property. As the array we created was a three by three array, that is the dimensionality was two. So that is what is said or stored in the end dim property. You could, you could check the shape of the array by using the shape property. This says that it was a three by three array. You could check the size of the array by using the size property. The size is essentially the product of the elements in the shape. So since our array was a three by three array, we get three by three uh, or three times three equal to nine. The D type property can be used to check the data type. So since all the elements were int, this is an int 32 data type. Okay. There are other int data types as like the uh, int 8, int 16, int 32, and there are uh, float and double data types. There are Boolean data types. So uh, the D type can be used to check the data type of the array. Also, there is a really important method called the reshape method, which can be used to reshape the array. 
so let's say d equal to reshape and then to this method you would pass a tuple you do not pass the shape directly you pass it as a tuple so let's say i want nine rows in one column so now d has nine rows and one column however the reshape method does not alter the actual array so if i still print s it is still a three by three array so the reshape method would create a copy and uh, change the dimensional uh, or change the shape of that copy and it does not alter the actual array now let us look at some popular ways of creating arrays if you want an array with all zeros you can use the zeros method say i call the zeros method and pass to it the integer 5 it would create an array with five elements all of them being zeros if i want a higher dimensional array i would pass to it a tuple so this would create an array with all zeros with uh, the array being a 2 by 2 array so this is a 2 by 2 array if instead of calling the zeros method i call the ones method uh, it would create an array where all elements are one and the dimensional uh, and the size would be uh, according to the size passed in the uh, argument so this would be a 2 by 2 array with all elements being ones uh, now we would also look at two other method that is the a range method and uh, the lin space method if you call the a range method and pass to it the start the end and the step size it would create an element an array which starts at the start ends right before the end so you would see that 11 is not included uh, that is because the a range method does not include the end and the step size is 2 you can see that it is 1 to 3 so the step size is 2 and 3 to 5 again the step size is 2 uh, you can omit the step size and a default step size of 1 is taken so this starts from 1 and ends at 10 which is the integer right before 11 uh, and if you omit the start it would uh, take the start to be a default of 0 so here the array starts from 0 the lin space method uh, takes the start end and the number of elements in the array so let's say 1 10 and I want 10 elements in the array so this would create an array which starts at the start ends at end here you would see that 10 is included this is different from a range where 10 where 11 was not included in the last case but in here the end element is included and the array has a total of 10 elements we can uh, see that there are 10 elements from 1 to 10 so uh, this method creates an array with a start end and the number of elements is specified if you do not specify the number of elements the default of 50 is taken so this array as 50 elements you can see that there are 50 elements in this array I mean you can try it out let's look at the uh, arithmetic operations or the arithmetic operators in a numpy let's have two arrays a and b where this is a and this is b so a is essentially 2 3 3 4 uh, 2 by 2 array and b is again a 2 by 2 array 1 2 2 3 now i can do a plus b which would yield an element wise addition so basically each element is added to the corresponding element i can do a minus b which is an element wise subtraction i can do a times b which is an element wise product uh, this is different from a dot product which can be obtained by a dot b so this is essentially a dot product a dot product is a linear is a function in linear algebra which is different from element wise product so a times b would be an element wise product and a dot b would be a dot product and a divided by b would 
b a divided by b as in the division so here you can see that there are no floating point precision this is because uh, all the elements were int if you had float numbers or double numbers you would get float precision so this is a property in python if all numbers are int the uh, results would be int you could also uh, so let's look at a again so if this is a you could also do a plus 2 so this would add 2 to all elements in a so the difference between a plus b and a plus 2 is that 2 is a scalar where uh, while b was a matrix I could also do a minus 2 it would subtract 2 from all elements in a I could do a times 2 it would multiply each element in a by 2 I could do a divided by 2 so now this would yield uh, division without the floating point position however if I did a divided by 2.0 now as 2.0 is a float point number I would get floating point position so also I could do a double asterisk 2 so now this would raise the power of all the elements in a to 2 so this would be a to the 2 essentially so so this is a so it is 2 3 3 4 whereas a to the 2 is 4 9 9 16 so these are basically the operations which are possible using uh, numpy so you can directly add subtract by the plus minus operators 